at it all. The perfect job. Man. Hey. The perfect girl. You look like a movie star. Which one? Gary Busey. <sighs> the perfect life. You know anything about this Frankie Frico guy? He's like a little gremlin that likes to party. You shouldn't call numbers like that. Until one day, things got Frico. Hello? This is Frankie. Yeah, buddy. Are you ready? Ready for what? To party, my man! Yes! I'm ready to party! Yeah, boy. Ah! Oh my god. We're here to help you loosen up. We're gonna party hard, and then we'll be on our way. Time to get free go! Shamadu. Listen, you little freaks. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna make you pay! Is everything all right? You sound stressed. Oh, no. Don't pick it up! You can't escape me! When the world is in peril. Where are we? No more games, Frankie. No one runs from me. You're mine! Don't be a hero. This is bad. I believe in you. Let's boogie! Be a freako. Got a little Frico. Frankie Frico. President Munch needs a new concubine. He's a keeper. Ow! Uh, how's everybody doing? <laughs> isn't this place, isn't the review just great? I mean, he's got a new lease. Okay. Working on a new facade on the front. Last night it was a packed house to see Guillermo del Toro here. And tonight, best of all, we're all gonna watch Frankie Frico. <laughs> now listen, now listen. My name is Greg Chabet, all right? And I love little rubber monsters. And if you like little rubber monster movies, you are gonna love Frankie Frico. If you like ghoulies, if you like critters, if you like hobgoblins, if you like Puppet Master, if you like some movie never, no one's ever heard of called Gremlins, you are gonna love this. And super exciting, tonight, only tonight, we've got the star of the film, Connor Sweeney. Let's hear it for Connor. And the director of photography, Pierce Dirks. They are both here. So be sure to stick around after the movie. We're gonna be doing a Q&A. Watch the movie very closely and intently and think of an intelligent question to ask because it's a very intelligent, highbrow movie and you're gonna love it. So I just want to say, like, before this thing starts, remember, the review is a wonderful place, right? We all love it, so please go to the concession stand and tip the staff generously because they're all wonderful people. Let's hear it for the review staff. And also for Martin up in the projection booth, the projectionist, he will be projecting the film onto the screen and into your eyes. And also, thank you so much to Serena Whitney. We all love her, the director of programming. Let's hear it for her. She asked me if I wanted to do this because she knows I love Little Rubber Monsters and that's literally the only credential I have to do something like this. And it means so much. Thank you, Serena. But stick around, because here we go. We're going to watch Frankie Frico and stay here afterwards for a Q&A with Connor Sweeney and Pierce Sturks. <laughs> Keep it going. Wasn't this so fantastic? This is the first time I've seen that on a big screen. Pierce, your photography is beautiful. Isn't his photography great? His photography is beautiful. Connor, your acting is beautiful. You know, I've seen probably around 80 Little Rubber Monster movies, including this one. And it's kind of a lost art, right? Because in the 80s, they were making tons of these up to the early 90s. And now we finally have a new one. So my understanding is, Pierce, 
you and Steve Kostansky were just plowing through dozens of these movies a couple Christmases ago. Explain yeah. the genesis for Frankie Frito. Yeah, so one of the main genesis for the project was, uh, it was kind of peak pandemic time, and we had nothing to do, so I was uh, hosting these like uh, bootleg virtual movie nights. And uh, yeah, we were just watching all sorts of just weird stuff that we hadn't watched before. And for some reason, I, I don't even know why, but we got on this kick of watching all the little monster movies, but not like the main ones, like Critters or whatever, but we watched those too, but we got really deep into like the weird Empire, like Full Moon and the knockoffs and stuff like No Main Norm, and just went really, really deep into watching all these absurd little monster movies, and it kind of culminated with watching uh, Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to College. You remember Ghoulies Go to College? They talk in that one. If you haven't seen Ghoulies Go to College, it is fantastic. It, it delivers everything that you want, possibly out of a film called Ghoulies Go to College. But uh, it, we realized when watching that, that amidst like all of the craziness that was going on, just kind of the, the pressing news cycle and all the shit that was basically happening in the real world, that the one of the most purest moments of joy that we've had like over the past like year and a half was watching ridiculous little puppets prance around on screen doing the most stupid things. There was just this pure, almost kind of innocence to the film that was very childlike that we realized like, oh, we, we're missing that. We want to do something like that for modern audiences. Videos, and there's a compilation video of all of these 1-900 commercials from the <laughs> 80s and 90s. And one of them was Freddy Freaker, which is Frankie Frico, basically. Yeah, he's a rubber puppet. And we were like, we gotta make a movie about this guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, Steve basically did the rest. Yeah, I remember uh, the, yeah, it was that marathon that kind of solidified things, but we were discussing kind of, like, who would call that number? I remember uh, <laughs> and, uh, Steve and I, we, we were having some downtime as well, the final days on set of uh, In a Violent Nature, and we were discussing kind of like, yeah, who, who the hell would call the Freddy Freaker number? Like, who, who would be stupid to call any of these that? numbers? There yeah. was one nine hundred cry was one of them. <laughs> yeah, there are videos online of one nine hundred cries. Just listening to people cry. Yeah. Or you cry. You cry. Yeah. They they talk you through a good yeah, cry. Very yeah. So so that was also the genesis for the project was just trying to figure out like what type of person would call this number and like what would happen if they did. Like, I'm feeling very judged because you seem to be insinuating that you know. I might be ridiculous for having called these numbers. You guys never called any of these numbers? <laughs> I would've, my parents wouldn't let me. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to. I definitely wasn't allowed to, but I called them anyway. You find the credit card, right, and you go. And there's no trace of these things. Like, there's the Freddy Krueger number that was a joke that I wrote for this, and I'm so desperate to hear, like, did he just chirp you when you called, or yeah, what? Yeah, it's, it's all like lost It's all disappeared. Now. There's no tra trace of these things. We'll have to track this down. Yeah, that's, that's I'm desperate to hear what, Freddy Krueger has to say to people. When yeah. I'm used to uh, the kind of grueling solo nature of shooting a Steve movie. <laughs> this one, the, it came about so weird because he was he would he sent me like a page of a script first, uh, no treatment, no outline. It was just a like the first couple of pages of a script, and it was Connor Sweeney. And I was like, okay, this has to be a temp name. <laughs> he doesn't have a name for this character yet. And he, Eventually, I had a whole script where I'm playing myself for some. I don't know. I don't still don't know the joke. I don't get the joke. I'm mean, playing Connor Sweeney, you know. But uh, I did not expect it to be as. Uh, it makes you feel fucking crazy to to not act with anybody for a whole movie. And not only was I not acting with anybody, I was not. I didn't act with the articulated puppets. So the ones that are blinking and moving their faces and stuff, I wasn't all, acting all with the, those. All the hero puppets, like we basically, we had three different versions of the puppets. We had a, an animatronic version that worked like maybe 10% of the time. We had like a more articulated uh, hand puppets where you could like move their eyes and stuff, you could flap their mouths and they were kind of loose joint where you could move them. And then we had like stiff puppets that you could kind of prop up and place in a certain pop. They were toys. Like, yeah, they were basically just like big toys, just all made out of silicone. They were, they were pretty heavy. But um, yeah, for most of Connor's stuff, like it's like a lot of over the shoulder where we're kind of shooting for a puppet and Connor's having like a big like monologue. But what he's looking at is just, <laughs> just like, the entire time because we, we filmed all of Connor's stuff first in like the first um, uh, about like, uh, what was this? Like about 18 days we filmed all of Connor's stuff and then we had another week of filming just the puppets. So all the like hero shots of the puppets were done after the fact. So Connor was just acting off of basically a brick wall. And none of the, the voice actors were there, so it was all just 
the different random puppeteers, whoever was doing it, like Frankie had like five different voices, whoever was offering. Yeah, it. there was no, and they they were like exhausted, but they were not giving like real performances because they were tired and they were like reading it for the first time while they're reading the script. And I remember like, having to cry to them. It was you feel so nuts by the end of it. What age would you say you were comfortable introducing this movie to your your kids? I let my son watch it. He's six. <laughs> he loved it. It's the first movie of mine that he's allowed to watch and he really liked yeah, it. Yeah, we it wasn't something we talked about ahead of time, but it just kind of morphed as we were doing the film, like, oh yeah, this should be like a PG thirteen where all all the stuff that's implied, it's more for the mindset of like a nine-year-old that doesn't know what these things are. That's why like the the, the frequency stuff are partying, their version of partying is, you know. Staying up all night, drinking soda, eating pizza, <laughs> hot dogs, and chips, and listening to music. It's it's all very, very you know tame by comparison. And the same with like Connor, sort of like a, you know hot and steamy sessions with his wife. Yeah, sex is like an abstract. Yeah, it's so it, it, just that it kind of stemmed from uh, Ghoulies Go to College because even though Ghoulies Go to College has a lot of nudity in it, it still has this very weird, innocent sort of vibe about uh, sex and relationships where it's just it, it's more like a, a kid like stole his dad's you know like playboy and looked at it for a couple of minutes and they got scared and put it away but uh yeah with, with this it just kind of uh morphed organically into being something that was more pg-13 because we, we didn't want to go uh, too hard turn that off <laughs> we yeah it, it's because there's another version of this movie that's a lot snarkier and kind of making fun of those those movies that were riffing on, but we wanted to be kind of almost like a sincere tribute to the silliness of those, those projects. Uh, is there an Astron 6 style uh, movie? We would love that. We, we've we always got ideas. We're always talking to each other about uh, potential ideas, but the, the difficult thing is money. <laughs> if there's any rich people. <laughs> Anybody here have money? <laughs> Lots of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've all, we've always got ideas, and uh, we would love to make something else. This was so fun to have everybody, the band, back together, uh, and it kind of made us all miss it and want to do it again. So uh, we really hope that we can do something something else. You absolutely should do it again. And thanks, you all, for being here. And thank you so much for coming. <laughs>